Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Da -na -na. In the corner, back in the corner. I had a little experience yesterday, so I wanted to ask you how you respond to your intuition. So yesterday <coughs> was Sunday and it was really nice weather. I think it's, we've had really nice weather, I think from last Thursday, then Friday it was, it was started off okay, then it was really rainy and then Saturday, Sunday have been really nice. Today's back holiday, Monday, so I don't know where you are, but the weather here in the Shires is looking mighty fine. And it's supposed to be the first day of, the, the hottest day of the year so far, which let's face it, is not a hard task, but it's still welcome. Um, so anyway, we, I was here with Nyla and we were going, we were taking a little excursion over to St Albans to the cathedral to pick up some frankincense and myrrh from the gift shop because it's the best thing for energy clearance of a space. And because of the way it works, you have these little circular um, charcoals and you put them on the hob fire till they get really, really red hot. And then you pour the little, they've got like crystal resin, crystal resin of frankincense and merlin. It smokes loads and loads because they use it in the church you know, in the little thing. And they use it to clear energy, really f high frequency. And that's why Jesus was given it back in the day. I mean, I'm, it's about <clears throat> protection. So anyway, and clearing of unwanted, low vibration, low frequency. We were going to the cathedral to go and do that and then get an ice cream. And on the way there, I just kept having this feeling, I was like, I have to think about, you know, putting money aside because I'm going to be I'm going to end up spending money on this car soon. I need to remember to be aware of money for the car. And then as I was thinking that, I was at the same time I I had a thought that was trying to shut that down, which was basically like no, don't 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 think that. Don't focus on that. You're going to call that energy you're like bringing that into ex your experience if you're thinking in that way everything's fine with the car don't worry you'll be fine anyway so we're driving along and we had some tunes playing you know windows down really nice weather um singing along and then i kept saying i kept turning it off and i was saying to nyla can you hear there's a sound i, th I can hear a sound in the car and like turning the music on trying to listen and I wasn't sure what I was hearing or if I was making it up, so I put the music back on. So we get to the car park and I get out of the car and we're about to walk off. And then I notice that the passenger side front tire is completely flat, completely, completely flat. And then I'm thinking to myself, well, how did I not notice this as I was driving? <laughs> but then I feel like I did, which is why I kept turning off the music. Um, and it also felt, I guess, because I was taken with, we were singing and like, it was a bit of a vibe, we were really into it. That's why I didn't fully necessarily engage with the physical feeling, but I could thought I could hear something. So basically I had to go and pay for the car park and find the nearest petrol station. You've got to love Google. Find the nearest petrol station so I could go and pump the tire up enough to be able to get to the tire shop to replace the tire. Now, obviously it was about three o'clock on a Sunday, not just a Sunday, a bank holiday Sunday. So what are the chances of finding a tire shop? Anyway, thanks to Google, we found the nearest um, petrol station, went to the petrol station, never had to press the flat tire button before. So that was a great new experience. 
press the flat tire button pump the tire up the nearest tire places were saying like hemel and i was like we're not going to hemel we might as well go back to hartford and then go to the because i've got a guy who i go to in the town and we just about would have made it if he was open had it not been a bank holiday monday sunday um so we got there and he was closed so managed to get home and i thought well that's okay that's fine if the tire goes flat again it really doesn't matter because we'll just sit there until i can deal with it on tuesday but my intuition was spot on about me having to spend money on the car soon i didn't think it'd be that soon or well i didn't try i tried to not to entertain the thought because i was like don't reinforce that if you affirm it you're going to call it in now i will definitely say because of how quickly it happened I'm, I'm going to call that intuition. I'm not going to say that I, I manifested something in that short period of time. But how interesting that I tried to talk myself out of the feeling that I had and that I tried to discount something that came into my head very clearly and was a clear message and a sign. So my question to you is, how often do you pay good attention to your innate intuitive sense and feeling versus talking yourself out of it and disbelieving some information that you're getting that is probably very good, very clear um, and guided in whatever way for you? And how often do you second guess yourself and say that can't be how it's, well, it can't be true. It can't be how I feel it is. It can't be what I perceive it to be because X, Y, Z. Our intuition is a very, very, <coughs> excuse me, important aspect of our human ability. It's again, something that sets us aside from other species, other animals our um, ability to have that innate sense that is something that is quite unexplainable and quite intangible to prove so how would science prove intuition i've heard things like deja vu explained away as the hemispheres of your brain moving slightly differently and then catching up with each other but there are you know phenomena that we just can't necessarily put a logical explanation on so it may be that you have a sense and feeling about a particular person or a situation a, a place that you go to the energy just seems a bit off the vibe's not quite what you would like it to be or it something inside you tells you that it's it's not as it should be should be <coughs> for you to you know be interacting in that situation in that place with those people but then you might be saying otherwise your logical brain might be trying to tell you oh that's silly discount it um, and make yourself wrong for having that sense and feeling but when we learn to cultivate and trust our intuition it can actually be really helpful in um, supporting us being guided and paying attention to the signals that life is trying to give us you can call it whatever you want to call it source god the universe nature i don't know how you connect with that the explanation for why you have this innate inner knowing or innate guidance but the more we can cultivate a trust and a sense of belief in the signals that we receive we're doing two things one of them is we are helping to connect to our divine feminine expression so one of the 
aspects of divine femininity and this is whether you're male or female it's not about gender it's not about sex is our divine feminine gives us the balance to the divine masculine within us and the divine feminine is about being able to slow down it's about being able to be receptive to connect inwards instead of an outward expression into the world and to listen to our intuition to get that felt sense in a knowing innate um, inner understanding that can be very powerful in helping us decide actions next steps interactions with other people and so on so yeah that is my question where do you sit with yourself with intuition a i.e do you believe you have it or do you tell yourself you're not an intuitive person how much do you listen to and honor your intuition and allow yourself to act on it to help you move forward because the more you can step into that space because part of the intuition is is not very clear it's not linear it's not necessarily black and white which is a more logical ma masculine approach to things which I think as women in our society in our world and I've read something very interesting which I'll come to in a second numero 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 numerologically to do with numerology and about um, <laughs> about um, when we were born but when you uh, trust or cultivate that more, it pays you huge dividends. And we have been socialized to be more focused on outward expression, logic, things that you can prove in a more masculine based society, but in a more masculine approach to life as well. So the numero, 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 numerology, numerological, numerological well, thing that I read was that if you were born in 19, blah, 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 you were born into the energy of a one cycle because one and nine is 10 and then it, it reduces down to one energy and that is about having things in black and white things being really absolutely definitive and clear things that are tangible that you can prove logical and then we are struggling a lot of us, those people who were born in the 19 long times because the people born in the two in the 20 thousands I'm not explaining this very well. So if you're born up to 1999, like Nikki was, because she was born last century, <laughs> um, you're in the one energy. And if you were born from 2000 onwards, you're in the two energy. And the two energy is about uncertainty. It's about things being a bit hazier and a bit less clear. It's about living with and being okay with having that level of uncertainty so that was just another random fact that i just threw into there and i wonder if that how much that affects people's ability to trust their intuition just as an aside yeah so ponderings on a monday i'll see you very very soon well, hello, hello, hello back. Took a little bit of a, some time out, uh, very intentionally. So there's a week that has been missed. Well, no, I started doing a vlog two weeks ago, sometime two weeks ago. And then there's a period of time that I didn't record anything. Um, and then here I am now and that was because during that week so the end of that week on Friday the 4th of June my eldest Nikki turned 22 which, which was the age which is the age 
that I was when I had her. And then off the back of that weekend, I had training, online training that was done on a US schedule. So I was just like three days back to back, really late nights, starting um, early-ish in the morning doing other bits and pieces. So it was a conscious, considered decision to take time out. So I want to talk about, to wrap this vlog up, the significance of, well, there's several things, like just taking time out, giving yourself permission to do that and stop and reflect, because it's super important, that number one. And number two, I guess the journey that we go on as women um, and giving ourselves permission to look out for ourselves versus do what society, family, friends, everybody else expects us to do. So this is a follow on from me first and then you. Well, it's related, not necessarily a follow on. So the first thing is, I want to ask you a question. How often do you take time out to stop and meaningfully reflect? To stop and really take stock of, you know, a moment in time or a period of time that you may have just been through. So for example, now when we, things started to unlock from the lockdown, that was a pretty intense period from, well, I'll call it from the end of last year, the end of 2020, until let's say the kids went back to school. When was that? I can't even remember now. I mean, it's crazy to me to think we're like nearly halfway through June already. But things had to change very significantly during that period of time because most of us were dealing with the kids being at home um, juggling work and personal responsibilities as well as dealing with the home. And I've sp I think I spoke about that in a couple of videos ago um, in terms of not uh, feeling that we have to be able to do everything. Now I'm confusing myself, but basically the, 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 that period of time ended and it's so tempting after we finish something like that to just go on to the next thing because the next thing is already there. And obviously life dictates that we have to keep moving and have to keep performing certain functions to make things happen and things to, to continue. But then there is a value in whilst that is happening, being able to hit pause in certain other aspects so that we can focus and take time and really actually notice what are the lessons that I have learned going through these periods? What are the significant things that I've experienced? What were the significant challenges and tough times and hardships that going through this moment in time threw up for me? So for example, going through that period of the lockdown, I heard it from lots and lots of people, uh, the missing human contact, missing face-to-face -face connection with people like IRL, not just on the screen, missing that um, ability to be spontaneous, to go out and do things, to literally be outside. But to be fair, the weather was kind of on our side in the sense that not being able to go many places or do things that much didn't become that much of a big deal because the weather was kind of dodgy. But remembering and taking stock that despite all those challenges, we were still able to find maybe creative and inventive ways to deal with things. Maybe we lost the plot quite a few times and and reacted in ways that we would have preferred not to. And what does that show us? Where do we need to focus in terms of self-development in those kinds of areas? So for me, taking the time out recently over this last week was about looking back over basically my career through motherhood. And it's a really weird idea and concept. Like, if I think about it, obviously it's my life and I've just been getting on with it, but to think of that 
excuse me, half my life, half of my whole life has been dedicated to being a mother. And that is like crazy in so many ways because the other half, I was growing myself and I wasn't, you know, it wouldn't have been appropriate for me to have been a mum in that part of my life. But it it is a little bit of a tiny mind to think that the choices, the experiences, um, the, the situations that I've been in for half an hour, over half my life, have been influenced by the fact that I've had to take care of other people, that I've had to put the health, well-being, financial, safety, um, experiential, everything of other people ahead of me. Now, when I look at it that in that way, even just saying it like that, it just it's a lot to process, there's a lot to take in. And when I think about um, the fact that I grew up a lot through my motherhood, um, and I'm not expressing it very well, the words are not coming very easily today, but that's fine. I grew up, I had a lot of my adult life experience as well, no. Rewind. I had a lot of my adult life whilst also experiencing my motherhood. There we go. So that is, that's, that's a lot. That's a big thing because when I remember back to the time when I became a mum, so I was in my second year at university studying law um, and there were so many people, literally everybody told me that I wouldn't finish my degree. Now that I had, had the baby, that would be it now. My life would be taken over and I'd just kind of give up. Um, and I don't know whether I was determined to prove them wrong, but you know, for me, it wasn't an option. I'd started this degree, why would I not finish it? And the timing was really actually quite superb because I had my pregnancy right the way up to June when the exams were. I took most of my second year exams. I only had to miss criminal law because that was literally on the due date. So I was like, mm, I don't think I'll go in for that. And then I had a period of three months, June to September, uh, whilst Nikki was a tiny little baby, but that's a lie, she was a tiny. She was nine pounds, nine ounces. Ouch. And she consistently put on weight. You know when they do this thing and they're like, oh yeah, the baby, if you breastfeed them, the baby's gonna lose weight and their weight's gonna drop but she consistently put on weight every time. Um, I, and I, you know, I think that's quite skilly. I think that's quite skilly in terms of obviously the milk I was producing and obviously her ability to retain babiness. And then, so I went back to uni in the September. I did the exam that I missed, like just before the, the third year started. And I've spent the third year going for walks, doing things, baby things during the day, and then staying up till like two, three o'clock, doing assignments, doing my dissertation, revising, all those fun things. And I was one of the very few people, because that year the results were really bad when we finished in the third year. Most people got two twos or a third. So I happily got a two one, a high two one. I got first in my dissertation, first in a lot of my final exams. So yeah, go me. Um, but anyway, and then it just went on. I went and started my masters. Did I take a year out? Or go straight to my masters? I can't remember. I did a masters in European law, amongst other things. But anyway, that's a whole nother thing. I digress. I digressed and then the uh, thing cut out because <clears throat> I'd run out of disk space on my little thingy device. What I was trying to get back to is even just hearing 
myself I kind of looked over what I'd said because I talk a lot like I, it just surprises me how much I can say in not a lot of time no how much I can say and how much time it takes up that's what I mean see it was quite a significant <clears throat> Do I want to call it rite of passage? I mean, I've been going on about rites of passage for a while. So yes, it was a rite of passage, but also a, a really important, significant reflection space because I remember, you know, along with people saying to me, oh, you, you're not going to go back to you, you're not going to finish and whatever. Basically, <sighs> trying to hand me a an identity trying to hand me suggestions for how my life would unfold because of the fact that I was still studying and pregnant a young mum there was no possibility of being married at that time there was no possibility of gosh I don't know so many things that resulted in ultimately me being on my own with this you know baby at that time and at such a pivotal point in my life so I hadn't established any career hadn't established any significant experience of living on my own but that's not true oh that's a whole nother thing but living on my own in the sense of having a career let's just put it that way so to go through all these significant life moments whilst already having children um is something that uh, that's the only experience i've ever had but then now to be at a point where I see my eldest child continuing their own life and the thought of having children as far as I know is not on the agenda for her she's got other things that she's experiencing and you know there's a few par parallels because I didn't go to uni straight away I did I went to performing arts college then I did A levels I worked throughout that whole time and then then I decided to go to uni to study law um, and she's worked and she's doing things you know her own way and finding out about herself and finding out about life and learning lessons but she's doing it on her own she's doing it as a single as being responsible for her as a single self person she hasn't got kids that she's trying to um, factor into any of the decision making and it was just like a really stark contrast to see that reflected back the difference um and i don't make it right or wrong it's just the way it is part of the reason i ended up having her when i did was because i was told that i was going to be that i was infertile <laughs> so I decided to go to the Chinese herbalist and take the Chinese medicine because I didn't want to be having to t take um, medical, like chemical things later down the line. And it worked so well that I just got pregnant straight away. Um, but yeah, so it was like having that time out to reflect and it, and it just brought me so many, I guess there was a lot of disappointment in myself feeling as though some of the things that I wanted to have accomplished I felt like I haven't accomplished them yet and I say this against the backdrop I have done so many things so this is a lot of this is me in my head being super critical I've taught law which was such fun times I've had one, two, three different businesses. Again, such fun times, huge learning curves, huge learning lessons. And then I've been able to take care of my dad through his, the later stages of his life. So these are all magnificent things that had I not made the decisions I did the way that I did them, had I not had the life I had, it wouldn't have been possible. 
but it is that thing of just actually stopping and looking and just saying wow 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 and of course when we do this when we take time to stop and take stock then that also allows us to then consciously make the decisions as we go forward or be more aware of where um, the past, whether it's a moment, whether it's a longer period of time, months, weeks, years, lifetimes, how that's affected where we've got to at this point in our lives and then how we then choose to move forward on an ongoing basis. So there was a lot of that going round and round and round and round in my head. Um, and, and I just needed that, that mental pause, I guess. Everything else was happening. I needed that mental pause to take stock. And that, that, that process hasn't, isn't completely finished. It's still ongoing at this point because I got to the point where I was like, okay, wow, look at all these things that have happened. Wow, look at all these things that you're not that enamoured with, that you're not really celebrating because you would have liked things to have been a certain way. And then that brings us to attachment, which is another conversation. If we get attached to things in a particular, um, having a particular outcome or being a particular way, and then we're disappointed when we when it doesn't transpire that way or it doesn't work out that way but i don't think i was necessarily attached to certain things but i feel like i would have liked to have done more or i feel like i would have liked to have attained certain um milestones no not milestones but just been further along in certain aspects of my life but that's great because i'm where i am and that gives me an opportunity to work with what i've got and move forward and then it's the moving forward that becomes a significant thing because when you take stock and you do so deliberately, you give yourself an opportunity to then decide what comes next. What am I actively, based on what I've reflected on, based on what I've seen, what I've understood, maybe that things I hadn't necessarily been aware of at the time that they were happening, but now looking back hindsight is 2020 vision, I can see differently or I can see more clearly or I can understand better how do I then consciously decide to take that forward because it's always a process of constant creation constant tweaking constant changing constant re reinventing re remembering looking back deciding um, deciphering things you've been through and then deciding how you take that forward so that's where i'm at that conscious decision of now saying okay so this this milestone has been attained these are the learnings these are the reflections these are the enjoyable things these are the things to be celebrated these are the things perhaps that need more work and need to be looked at and need to be refined and need to be consciously put forward into the plans that come next so my invitation to you is to maybe no let's be decisive to take an area of your life maybe it's a situation maybe it's an expression of who you are for example in your work life as a mother in relation to a particular child that your relationship with them, your relationship, your relationship with yourself, any particular aspect of who you are, and take some time for reflect, reflection. Take some time to take some time to look back, to think, to feel, to remember, to evaluate, to connect with that past, to understand, to look at it maybe a bit more objectively than you were able to when you were going through that past and through that experience. And then take the lessons. What are the lessons there for you? What are the things that you celebrate, that you want to amplify, that you want to remind yourself of? Because sometimes we forget our wins as well. We, we just take them for granted or they've gone past and we don't remember how powerful they were for us at the time that we were going through them. So highlighting those parts of the story, those parts of the looking back and the reflection. And then with that information, 
deciding how do I wish to take that forward? How am I wanting to use that to help me shape and um, focus on what's coming next? We are at a really powerful and pivotal time, I feel, very deeply as a human race because of everything that's going on in our world is not an accident. There are things, that this whole stage has been set this way to allow us to be more participatory, to allow us to be more consciously involved in how the world evolves and things move forward. And, you know, it's whatever your standpoint is, whatever your perspective is, we all have a responsibility to feed into that further development and um, evolution of humankind. And that begins with the decisions we make about ourselves. That begins with the conscious awareness and commitment to expansion, to improving, to being better, to doing better, to um, taking responsibility for what that means for all of us on an individual basis. And again, look, I've done it again. Just talking, talking, talking. I don't know if you can hear that. The cat launches himself at the back door because we haven't got cat flap. So <laughs> he thinks by throwing himself at the back door, I'll open the door. I mean, he's right because I will in a minute because I know he's there and he wants to come in. But I've seen the time. The other thing that I said about women, let's take that onto the next book because this is just obscenely long. Thank you if you've made it all the way here. I really appreciate it. Please comment. Let me know if you can relate to anything I'm saying. Let me know if you take time for a ref reflection. Let me know if this is part of your process or if this is something that's new to you that you will consider doing and you will try and apply. Talk to me, let's have a conversation. And then next time I'm I'm going to consciously be shorter in time and I'm, I'm not missing any more time now. For now. I say I don't know why I did it and I did it again. <laughs>